Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today we're continuing AP Physics 1, but we're going to do a little introductory video to vectors because we're about to do two-dimensional kinematics. Up till now, you've only dealt with one dimension. You've either done the x direction or the y direction. And in order to put them together, we need to first talk about vectors. Okay, so a vector is something that has a, a direction and a magnitude much like what we talked about before with velocity. So velocity is technically a vector. Um, and the components of a vector would be the x direction and the y direction put together. Okay, so a vector by definition will have a direction and a, a force behind it, so to speak. All right, so with that in mind, we are going to draw some vectors here. So create a vector that represents the following quantities. Vector A is four newtons north. That is going to be the length of the vector and 60 degrees above the x axis in the positive direction. So here's the x axis. We need to go in the positive direction by about 60 degrees and we need to draw a vector that is about four newtons long and we could call that part around 60 degrees. Looks more like 45, but it's close enough. And then for vector B, oh, we need to label it vector A. Vector B is four degrees, four newtons, but it's 120 degrees with the x-axis. So we need to go 90 and then an additional um, 30 to get about 120 here. And it needs to be the same length that we drew for this one because this length was four newtons. We need to make sure that four newtons is also here for vector B because the newton determines the magnitude, which is how long the hypotenuse, so to speak, of the vector is. Vector C is two, to, two newtons in the negative direction of Y. So it is going to be half the length because it is two newtons instead of four. And it is going straight down because it's negative in the Y direction. Okay, so uh, that, is, that is the three vectors that we have there. We could label it vector C. Vector quantities in two dimensions can be expressed by as a combination of their X and their Y components, meaning you can combine vectors or add them together via adding the X and the Y components. But in order to find the X and the Y components, you need to go back to geometry and basic so katoa sine cosine and tangent operations so here we have a vector that has a magnitude of 25 meters per second and it has 60 degrees above the horizontal so the magnitude is 25 and it is 60 degrees above the horizontal if we wanted to find the x component and the y component you can create a right triangle and then you can label your opposite side and your adjacent side. And then this would be your hypotenuse. And you may notice that your opposite side is the Y value, the up and down, and the adjacent side is the X value. So the cosine is always going to give you the X component in a way, because cosine, for those of you that have forgotten, of any angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse and sine of any angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. I'm doing it outside of the order of Sokotoa. Tan, although we won't use it in this example, is adjacent over, excuse me, it is opposite over adjacent. All right, so if we wanted to find the X component, we would need to do cosine of 60 would equal adjacent over hypotenuse, which ends up being multiply by 25, 25 cosine of 60 which tells you something. The X component is always the magnitude times the cosine of the angle. So the magnitude times the cosine of the angle. Sometimes you'll see a formula V times cosine theta. I don't necessarily recommend memorizing it, but um, I would recommend memorizing that cosine tends to deal with left and right, which is X. And then you can do your normal Sokotoa stuff. All right. The sine of that same angle 60 would equal x over 25, which means we would also multiply by 25 to get 25 times, I don't know why I put an x there, 25 times sine of 60 would give us our y component. And if we do the math for both of those, we'll find out that the x component is equal to 12.5 and the y component is equal to 21.7. And these are 
still quantities that are in terms of meters per second. So we are going up by 21 meters per second, 21.7 meters per second, and we are going to the left by 12.5 meters per second. So we're, although we are really going 25 meters per second this away, the x component of that, I smudged my paper, I'm sad, would be we are going to the right by 12.5 meters per second and we are going up by 21 point meters per second so you can separate them into their components to help yourself out for following and through and solving some problems. Uh, for instance, we have an airplane and this airplane is traveling due west at 200 meters per second against an easterly wind of 50 meters per second. Draw the vectors and uh, determine some other things about it. So we got draw the, the due west at 200 meters per second and the wind is pushing back at 50 meters per second. Well, if you are going west at 200 meters per second and the wind is pushing you easternly at 50 meters per second, what would happen to the relative velocity of the airplane. Well, the relative velocity of the airplane would be taken and being pushed back by that 50 meters per second. So the airplane is really only going 150 meters per second, which is going to relay into the next part, which is gonna be adding and or subtracting vectors. So, vector addition. You need to use the tail to head method. So you need to take the tail of one of the vectors, this dot right here would be the tail of both of these vectors, and move it to the head, which is the arrow part, the arrow head, of the other vector. So for instance, when you do this, you would get a resultant, let's call this vector A and this vector B. The resultant of A plus B would be is if you were to take B and move it over here to A. Make sure it is the same length. Mine's not quite long enough. Same length, there we go. A plus B would be A, you would do A, and then you would take the tail of B and put it on the head of A, and you would get the resulting vector, which would be this right here. This guy right here would be A plus B. Now what would happen if we were to take the other way around because there is commutative property here. If we did B plus A, if we flip the order, that means that we would take A and I would put A, this guy right here, at the top and it would end up in the exact same location. So adding vectors is commutative, but make sure that you recognize that this triangle shape, this A plus B is not the actual answer. The A plus B is whenever you go from the origin back to that point, okay? Subtracting vectors, I think, is more interesting. For instance, if we take the same example, if we wanted to do A minus B, remember that B was over here and A was over here. So if we did A minus B, oh, let's do B minus A. Let's do B minus A. Got to be a little easier. A was over here. B was over there. Um, it's easier to subtract a horizontal one. In order to subtract, what you need to do is change the layout of A and point it in the complete opposite direction that A originally was. So A is currently pointing to the right. If we redraw this vector where B is in the same location, but A needs to point in the exact opposite location, as it once before, then after you do that, you can do B plus A. Okay, well, if we were adding B and A together, I would need to take this A and I would need to move it to the top of B and that would be where my A would end up. So this is still B. We would just take this portion and move it up here. And if we do that, our resultant vector would be kind of like up and to the left and then really to the left. And our resultant vector would be, if we look at the origin, we had B, we now have A. The resultant vector would be this guy right here and this would be considered A, excuse me, B minus A. Okay? Whew. One more thing before we uh, quit for the day, I would think, maybe two. Um, to combine vectors mathematically,
because this was just visually, and visually gets messy. Uh, to combine vectors mathematically, add up, simply just add up your x components together and the y components together to find the components of the resultant vector. The resultant ve uh, force and direction can be found by using the properties of right triangles. So for instance, if we had this vector x and this vector y, the resultant vector would be right here. And if, let's say that this part right here was, I don't know, uh, three and this part was two, what would be the length of the resultant vector? That would just be using your Pythagorean theorem. Two squared plus three squared would equal c squared, which means we would end up with uh, four plus nine, the square root of 13 would equal your c. And the length of the magnitude of that would be the square root of 13. All right. With that in mind, you can also find the direction of it because if you know your x and your y component, you can find the direction of the vector by using tan, but specifically negative one because if you're looking for the angle, you would need to use the inverse tan or sine button or cosine button, but in this case, it's tan because we have our opposite and we have our adjacent and tan is opposite over adjacent. If you do tan negative one of that, I need a calculator, tan negative one, of two thirds is 33 degrees, approximately 33.7 degrees. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this one. In the next episode, we're gonna be using these resultant vectors to be actually adding the components together using sine, cosine, and tangent, and it's gonna get a little more intense. So until then, stay positive, everybody, and I will see y'all later. Bye.